I am unashamed. What about you? So welcome back to Unashamed. Um, y'all just got back from a hunt. I we saw, did. I saw a little pile of wood ducks oh, out there. Oh, hey, look. I mean, we had a couple guests in, so I was, you know, I was trying to impress them. But it, what I found <laughs> is the hardest duck hunts are shooting ducks where there are no ducks. Yeah. Just think about how hard that is. So, because the number one rule in duck hunting is be where the ducks are. Good, Al. I'm surprised. No, I I, I grew up with it, Jess. I know. Be where the ducks are. Well, speaking of what has happened to you, I mean, I feel like we were talking about Zach, the reason he's not here uh, earlier before we started, which is, you know, he's having internet problems. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with the resources he had, he's Mr. Tech Guy. He's the reason we have a podcast, yeah. and we've got this whole setup. Let me can't... just explain to y'all. We, right now, are live from where civilization in America <laughs> ends. Literally, as soon as you pass this building, civilization ends. Yeah. You would think. No one would ever live here on purpose. No offense, Phil, because you raised us here, and I was I was appreciative. But <laughs> this is just not the place if you want a social life, unless you're into befriending animals. And the only thing beyond us is a couple of meth shacks that that are yeah. torn down and rebuilt over time as the police clear them out, and game, and us. That's it. That's all that goes on beyond here. And I saw both today. You know, I pulled right before you get. Because hunting out. hours and meth hours are very similar. There, I saw two guys today. It was four thirty. Well, I was still the edge of town, and they were twenty feet apart, walking down the side of the road. And the first guy, he, I slowed down because I was watching him. He, he was like acting like he wanted to cross the road. There's nobody out here. Yeah. Me and him. <laughs> and and I thought it was his buddy. So I said, come on, cross the road. Because I just didn't want to hit him. Yeah. And I figured he was probably high on drugs or whatever. Because he was at a place where people don't roam. This is not New York City. People are not walking down the side of the road. But he was like, no. <laughs> no, you come on. <laughs> well, it sounds like he's been burned before. The buddies I was that I took hunting this morning they were behind me and i was thinking no you know it's hard to explain <laughs> 20 yards apart that these people are with me as soon as you go by well, he's gonna walk out i didn't want my buddies to come from west texas and and hit somebody high on drugs because that ruined the hunt oh yeah right before we get down there so i was like no come on and he's like nope <laughs> not going so then I thought, is it personal? So, well, the other guy who's crossed the road, now he's looking back at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I take off, and then he, he cuts in between yep. me and my buddies. Yep. Well, then this other guy starts yelling at me, just hollering. I thought, drugs. <laughs> <laughs> drugs. <laughs> I mean, I mean this, that's this is what's happening in our society, which is and that that usually happens in between midnight and yep. five o'clock in the morning. And you but sit. but it is any hour because when I was coming out here yesterday, it was in the morning. And what happens is there's a certain section before you just as you're getting out of West Monroe and it's where this lifestyle begins. And that all of them are on bicycles because they don't all they don't have a driver's license. They've all lost them because of DUIs and whatever's. And I mean, they dart in and you have to have your head on a swivel. Yeah. Because the last thing I want to do is run over some guy on a bike. Well, I told my buddies last night about the time that we were driving down here and, and Jay called me. I mean, it's 430 when your phone rings. You're like, there's probably a problem. I mean, that even though we're I'm supposed to be out going duck hunting, if somebody calls you in between 12 and 5, there's an issue here. Yeah. And he said, hey, watch out for that dead body laying in the road. And we told this story yeah. on a previous podcast. <laughs> and long story short, since I already told that, we called the law. We were on the phone with the sheriff, you know, and I'm looking and we were, I mean, he's laying in the middle of the road. But I could tell my buddies were looking at me like, 
I don't believe you. <laughs> and then it just hit me. I thought, what if he's not dead? And I was like, hey. And he, you know, raised his head up. And it was like, it looked like a bobblehead, a, a real life bobblehead. And I thought, Woo, whatever that was, was stout. Because <laughs> we were not. I mean, he just laid her down right there in the road. Yeah. And look, we're miles away from anything. Did you know, Jace? I didn't realize this the other day. Uh, somebody mentioned it, and we found it on Netflix or somewhere. The Some people from Poland came here and made a movie about our drug problem in our community. Really? And focused in on some people that live in this area of town I'm talking about. Well, isn't that funny? Because I told you the other day on the podcast about I almost watched that movie EO. Which was Polish. Right? Yeah, about a donkey. Yeah. Encountering people who had sin in their life. Right. Which I just couldn't do it. But well, I, I watched some of it. Oh, you watched that movie? Not EO. I oh, watched oh. the one about the drug people. And it was sad. I mean, but yeah. I just thought it was really sad because I thought people from Poland that used to be under the Soviet curtain are coming to our neighborhood to do a movie about how bad the math problem is around here. Well, it's bad. And I just thought that's I don't, something about that makes me really sad. That's, well, that's why I appreciate my upbringing. You know, when Phil came to the Lord, I was seven, eight years old. And he assumed after a couple of years of kind of getting lined out there that if someone came down here, they must be lost <laughs> in more ways than one. That's right. And they so you would share, you remember everybody walked through the door. I mean, you were immediate. It was like, it was like he was expecting them. Yeah. Of course they were like, you know, Phil preached the gospel. They would, they would knock on the door and dad would say, come on in, tell me a story. I mean, just like, well, he, and he would set them down and preach the gospel. Right. And then after he preached the gospel, they said, no, I ran out of gas. I'm trying to get some gas. <laughs> and Phil's like, well, I'm, I, I'm trying to give you some fuel for your life. But it made me think of this this verse because we're gonna we're gonna get into this talking about the afterlife. Which look, you can there are tens of thousands of books out there ab about what's gonna happen in the afterlife. Oh yeah, and I'll wait till we get there. But you know, a lot happens in First Thessalonians four, and I mean, there's whole books about this yeah. thirteen through seventeen. And I mean, I can quote it. I've, I've, and it's a very powerful, meaningful verse that Paul's writing to the Thessalonians, and he's like, "We believe that Jesus died, buried, and and was resurrected, and we don't grieve like the rest of men because who have no hope." Yeah, who have no hope? Because think about that. Which we we talked about this on the last podcast. If if you don't have Jesus, what are your options? And actually, when you look at our society, if if you have no origin that's intelligent, because I'm, I'm going to do a bit about this, you know, the craze now is artificial intelligence. AI. AI. So I think we should talk about R.I. Resurrection intelligence? So no, real <laughs> Well, I, I don't mind resurrection intelligence. Real so intelligence. So Paul is talking to about a young buck. How old? I'm not sure. But he was Titus. He said the, the the reason I left you in Crete was that you might straighten out what was left unfinished, and appoint elders in every town as I directed you, elders in the church. And you, you are an elder, right? That's correct. We're doing the same model. So I must be blameless. Later. The husband of but one wife can't be married to four or five women or more in these days. <laughs> or no, can't married at all. Or A more. man whose children believe. Now, if you you two, then you got Willie and Jeff, the young one. And your daughter. And my daughter. A man who don't, don't appoint them to help in church matters whose children are unbelievers, any of them. You get one unbelieving child, you're out. Shouldn't be an elder. 
not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Your children can't be that way, or you can't be an elder. Since an overseer, that's what he is, is entrusted with God's work, uh, check these qualifications and try to apply them in modern day. He must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to much wine. Have a glass from time to time, but don't get too wild with it. <laughs> not violent. Not violent. They're looking for people who say, is he violent? Now, if you went out in the, in these United States hunting an elder, all I've got to say is good luck. Yeah, that's true. Not violent. Not pursuing dishonest gain. Mm -hmm. Rather... He must be hospitable. You talked about people coming to the house. One who loves what is good, who's self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined, and he must hold firm to the trustworthy message, the gospel, as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. That's what the Apostle Paul had a guy going out. That's the kind of men he was looking for yeah what jace is saying i think is we're running out of good men <laughs> well and that's what look you you Man. you illustrated my point because i was gonna you know finish the rest of that first thessalonians 4 where it says and so we believe that god will bring with jesus those who have fallen asleep in him so there's a point in your life just to introduce the afterlife thought according to Jesus and according to examples, where when you die, your spirit goes and rests with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. And when he comes back, he's going to bring those with him. And by the way, uh, I think I did this in the bonus time last podcast, but we were, my wife was mentoring uh, a young girl who, who's, you know, had, had, a troubled family life and uh and I'm real proud of my wife for looking at opportunities cuz here's a young girl who's you know been coming to church with us and she's reaching out to her and it's like you want to help me you know decorate my house and but I noticed the conversation was about Jesus and and she made this phrase she said well where I'm at in my faith is, she said, I'm suffering from rapture anxiety, which I'd never heard that phrase. And so Missy said, well, Jace has been studying. that They've been talking about the afterlife. Because I was getting ready for this when we get to the, yeah. the marriage at the resurrection passage, which we're fixing to get to. And so I quoted this verse to her. I said, the word rapture, surprisingly, is not mentioned in the Bible. And she was looking at me like, are people you are sure? Sh people are shocked when you say and I, Because there's thousands of books about it. I said, but where they get it from is 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17. So I've already quoted half of this. But it said, according to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive and are left till the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. You say, well, what does that mean? Whether you're dead or alive, we're all, go this is all going to happen together. That's right. Because when he comes back, there will be some people st still living. Exactly. So whenever that is. So in first Corinthians, first Corinthians 15 gives us a few more details there, and we'll get to that when we get to the section. So hang on before you read that next section. Let's take our first break. So then, in verse 16, let me put my glasses on here. Al, you got me some Coke bottle. I've noticed in the last year that all of a sudden, anything... Well, we had like seven to choose from here of Dad's collection, but I do like so, that you got the Mr. Magoo special. So I like this passage, because when you turn 50, which I did a few years ago, <laughs> I started noticing some changes. And, uh, and even this morning, Al, you'll, you'll appreciate this. Because I've always been good at walking through mud. Yep. And when we take people hunting. By the way, walking through mud is not easy. 
Yeah. I take pride in the fact that I had a seven-year streak going until this morning that I had not toppled over in the mud and got wet. Mine hit about a week ago. (laughs) Down I went. (laughs) So this morning. Half of me was flooded from the boot to the, let's say, midsection. (laughs) Oh, why is this so funny? You capsized. Oh. So look. So just wallowing like a hog, <laughs> trying to come up. Well, I was on a I seven. I get up and I take my boot. It's thirty degrees, <laughs> and I just turned it up and poured the water out, put it back on my leg, and said, hey. "Well, this morning, look, it was. It they said it was thirty degrees, but there was ice in the in the water that was left in the P row that was had consolidated. So I'm thinking it had to be at least twenty eight. And I just got out of the boat and took one step, and I hit a soft spot in the mud, and that old right leg, now it's it's in its 50s. It wobbled. It didn't quite have the spring back action that it used to. It wobbled, and then I toppled. But I did. I couldn't blame it on getting old because I was old. Well, right. <laughs> so I thought. Yeah, you got older a little bit back, so it's... Yeah. <laughs> so I had been working so hard, just moving the boat, getting the decoys out. It For the first five seconds, it actually was refreshing. Yeah. After I got over the... <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since I made that sound, you know, I just figured I would own it. When I got back in the blind, I was like, well, the streak is over. I it's the reverse down. of when you were a little boy, Jace, because when you pee the bed, the first... Ten seconds is great because it's so warm and toasty. Yeah, and then it all gets bad after that's that. Kind of disgusting, <laughs> but but I remember those days. And so, but I will tell you this: when you're in your fifties, you you have the your body breaks down, but you can become smarter. And so, what I've done in the last seven years, even though I've had a seven year streak, is I put on top of my normal socks waterproof socks, just in case. And so, so you've been it, planning for this day. Yep. So because if your feet get cold, you're ready to go to the house. And so I don't. I, I wear sandals. So it was 28 degrees, and all the way down here when I drove, I'm giving you a tip here about how to keep your feet warm. Because look, and, and you can try to use artificial intelligence. You can do whatever you want to, but people, they they can't figure this out. They're like, why do my feet always get cold? And they blame the boot. I mean, yeah. size like, these things are a piece of junk. My feet are cold. Well, what happens is when you, you put two pairs of socks on and you got boots on and you get in your truck and heat it up, well, your feet sweat. sweat. They sweat. You got moisture. So then when you get out where it's 28 degrees, that water starts to want to freeze and your feet are in between i mean the water's in between your feet and the sock guess what your feet get cold so my feet are cold on the way to the hunt because i got sandals on yeah then i put the waterproof socks on and then the waders and then i get in the rig out in the cold and guess what my feet are warm yeah so today so i didn't even realize i just thought my whole right upper Top, my shoulder hit the water. So, you know, it was, and, and and I thought, I don't even think the water went down and, and got in my waiter. So, so it was, all, now I was chilly throughout the morning. But when I got back and took the waiters off, oh, it did get down there. It, it did go on the right side but of your my waiter. Save you. But my socks kept my feet warm. If you keep your feet warm and your head warm, guess what? You're going to be warm. So, I don't know why I just told you that, but I just Were you think, reading off your notes because no, there's you couldn't no read them earlier. No, there's no notes on this. I just thought, let's just, you want to talk about real intelligence. That's something that's I've learned. Mm. And if you don't want your feet cold, do that. Yeah, I figured out the same thing a few years back. It'll work. And now real intelligence, when it comes to Jesus, is real intelligence is living forever. There's your shirt. Real intelligence. If you even have the possibility, along with the promise, on how to behave and live forever, it's pretty surprising that that you'll make some serious changes in the way exactly. you operate. Why, why wouldn't well, you How about it? this? Real intelligence doesn't die. 
I think I like that'd that. be a good bumper sticker. I like that. But I'm open for ideas. Yeah. Because I think we need to combat this artificial intelligence. Because, you know, why why do they call it artificial? And then claim it's smarter than we are or anybody else. If it's artificial. We're... I mean, isn't this kind of like the fantasy land of uh, Pinocchio? I mean, you remember what his problem was besides the every time he lied, his nose got big. You know what the problem was? He had to find somebody who believed he was real, and then he would become real. Uh, I forgot so, the premise. Well, yeah. I, I'm getting that because then they come out with, you know, Spielberg come out with a movie that I never watched, but I read the blurb and said, no. <laughs> but the blurb said, same concept. You had to believe. If you believed it was real, then it would become real. Yeah. Well, that's not truth. <laughs> no. That's a made-up story. And they were trying to market our artificial right. intelligence by giving you a silly story that's not rational. So I, I'm just saying, at some point, we can have as much artificial intelligence as we want. It will wear out. So if they replace all the, at some point, their parts are going to start to get rusty and yeah, because they they can't live forever. Real intelligence is not dying. Yeah, it's not being broken. It's it's life. Right. So, I mean, I'm saying, I'm reading this, and we believe that. we. If you believe in the death of the Bible, you believe Jesus is coming back. If you're dead, he's bringing back your spirit. Well, then the next part says, the Lord himself will come down with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. So I'm into, you know, I'm into duck calls, making making a sound. And I have to admit, we killed we killed uh, ten wood ducks today, and I would say most of them came because I was blowing that wood duck call. Yep. Would you agree? Yep. And so and they that's were decoying why today they were decoying. And so my buddies, you know, I was trying to give them a good time because they they had let me uh, do a treasure hunting show on their ranch. So okay. I you know I owed them one here. Yeah. I'll take you duck hunting. They're like, well, how many ducks y'all got? You know, they were trying to get excited last night. And I was like, lower your expectations because <laughs> we don't have many ducks. <laughs> but I said, what we do have is is a really good wood duck call. Have y'all ever shot many wood ducks? Because I was gauging them to see how they felt. And they were like, we never have much. And I was like, oh, well, this will be epic. <laughs> if we can get these wood ducks in. And the same conversation comes up because people think the same thing. They think, well, you can't. Call, Call it wood, ducks. wood ducks. Well, here's my the theme for today, and this is off the top of my head. Real intelligence I learned in the wild is that you really can call wood ducks. Would you agree, Phil? I would agree. But did you not hear that your whole life? Duck hunt, a lot of people say you can't call wood ducks. Yeah. The reason Why'd is. You build a wood duck call, you said, to learn how to call wood ducks. <laughs> yeah. I think you built oh, the but first. You can't call wood ducks. I said, yeah, you can. I think yeah. Dad had the original, like an actual call. People used to take a shotgun shell and hold it down and make yeah. a whistle out of it. But you actually came up with the first wood duck call that sounds just like one. Yeah, Jace, yeah. Jace uh, blows his. You can't tell it from no. A wood I duck. mean, like we've we've all walked around flooded timber before and heard wood ducks and and our especially with Jace and Jay and all y'all, you know, the ones who are really good on them. Calling, it sounds just like it would. I couldn't tell the difference. You know, and you're walking around what, flood timber. At the next break, I'll go get my wood duck call. Because look, what I've learned is, and there's, they make thousands of sounds. But most people who then buy a wood duck call, they blow flying wood duck sounds. There's one sound that they make when they're flying. Yeah. There's. A lot of other sounds they make when they're sitting on the water. All right, so it's time for a break. So let's take a break, and we're going to let you get your wood duck up. All right, so welcome back. Jace has retrieved his wood duck call. I had to clean my slobber out. Yeah. I didn't want to. So this is the one you were blowing this morning. So here's what I like. And there are ducks laying out there, so this is, it's not like you were saying, well, this might work. Yeah, and we're in a little lake. I mean, they're called wood ducks for a reason. And most wood ducks light in the woods. That's right. Thicker the better. Trying to give you some real intelligence here. <laughs> so, so how could a bunch of redneck get together, a family household, 
and come up with the capability of sounding just like have a device that yeah. sounds exactly like what they want to sound. You have mallard, that's one sound. Mm-hmm. You have wood duck, that's another one. That's pintail, that's another one. Mm-hmm. There's teal, that's another one. Gadwall. How do you get all of them? That's what we pull off. Hey, the Lord was with us. <laughs> I, I think it goes back to Genesis 9. But well, I saw a movie recently, and it's like as soon as the patriarch of a family got clarity, then he knew what he needed to do, and that's what we started doing. Yeah. It was called The Blind. You ought to check it out. Yeah. And you took one of my horns, <laughs> my little whistles from the... Christmas. I noticed in the movie, it started out my gift. Yeah. Then somehow it became Jace's gift, and then it became Dad's. That was based on true story. <laughs> so look, so there's what that call. First of all, Phil came up with this, and then we realized, well, we need some wood duck decoys. Keith Powell <laughs> came close to devising that wood duck call. Okay. Bought it worked yeah. for me yeah. in the building. He was the call. one that was carving the shotgun shells, right? Do you remember out. his mantra? Every time I saw him, I yeah. said, how are you doing? He said the same thing. I'm just time. trying to survive. I'm just trying to survive. <laughs> But, you know, it's not a bad yeah, – I used to think, what does he mean by right. that? We but used to laugh look, when he said it. We're, in the, we're talking about living forever. Surviving is really smart, especially if, if you can survive your own death. If you can figure that out, that would be really intelligent. Yeah, that's it. I don't know why I'm on this real intelligence today, but I'm just trying to explain that some people think something because a lot of people, they can't get past the fact that we're talking about, and I haven't read it yet, but I'm fixing to, that dead bodies can come out of the ground. Yeah. And your soul can come from heaven after you're dead and be reunited with your dead body. They're like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. That's not possible. But what I'm telling you is what I learned in the wood duck world, because when you first come out with this wood duck call, no one believed that was possible. They said, you cannot call wood ducks. That's right. Because they would try to call. Now, there was a lot of problems in that. Number one is they didn't have wood duck decoys. They were calling at them with a mallard hen call. Yeah, well, that's just stupid. But uh, are people stupid today when it comes to life and death? Really stupid. So we we did combine this call with decoys yep. that look like wood ducks. And that, hunt, hunt in places that wood ducks may frequent because well, they don't always go anywhere. Right. If you're not hunting a place where there's wood ducks, this yeah. is probably not going to work. Not going to work. So I get it. But but what we learned in, in this new idea, which is they think it's possible to call wood ducks. Mm-hmm. And so that's the first thing about coming to Jesus is you got to realize this is actually possible. What, what if there was a guy named Jesus 2,000 years ago and he was the son of God and he lived a perfect life and died on a cross for the sins of the world, past, present, and future, and came back from the dead? What would well, seem to be and is without the him impossible impossible yeah so i think this wood duck illustration is great because what we learned in the process as we pursued this and put it into practice and and i'm going to a point here because i believe that in the story we're going to read about marriage and the resurrection that jesus's point is if you come to me then you'll know that there's an eternal life right and in that First John five thirteen, it says, "I write these things to you who believe in the name of Jesus, so, so that, you, that will you will know that you have eternal life." You could read that sentence and not really think of the power of that, because most people they think, "Well, I'm going to believe in Jesus just in case there's something to this, and then we'll see." And that's why we have 10,000 versions of what's going to happen when Jesus comes back. <laughs> of course, there's but, a mighty throng that say, thinking a, there's a real person named Jesus is the silliest thing I've 
They think yeah. it's just silliness. Yeah, even though you can document Jesus being here from other sources besides the Bible. Yep. Yeah. So what we learned in this process right off the bat, once we got the decoys, we, we learned a couple things. One, we realized that wood ducks seem to be more visually stimulated than what they hear. Now, we're still trying to figure out whether you can call them, but that is true because I've seen wood ducks light on the wake uh, that our motor's making. Yep. And we're in a boat and motor going down the lake, and wood ducks, I've seen them light. You've seen that. Yep. Because they're looking for those ripples in the water because they're- And in. they're used to flying in thick areas, and so they're looking for, you know, they're coming in. Like, if we were coming in like they were, you can't, it's a lot of brush, but they see a ripple, they know it's another that, wood duck. Look, they, I've had on multiple occasions, I've been walking through the timber just- Going, going out. Yeah, I'm, I'm thought the hunt's over, and had wood ducks light behind you in the waves that I was making. Yeah. And guess what? The hunt resumed because I turned around and shot them. <laughs> so I do realize they are more visually stimulated. Yeah. So like today, Al, we had we have an apparatus that Jay kind of invented that it has a, a a mallard duck mounted to a troller motor. Mm-hmm. Which, if you want to try this, good luck. <laughs> but we got it figured out. <laughs> and when the pro- propeller propels and it runs off a battery, like right. a car battery, then it pulls a string. And we put on the string four wood ducks. Well, when it propels, those wood ducks look like they're swimming around. So we realize they're more visually stimulated. So today you heard me first thing when I said, put them decoys out, I said, make sure you put wood duck decoys on the string. Because I knew that was going to be our number one duck. So there's a mallard in the middle with the wood ducks falling. Let's take another break. So here's the next thing we learned. If you only do the flying sound, so they make multiple sounds, but here's the flying sound. Well, they only do that when they're flying. Well, think about this. If you buy a wood duck call and you make that sound and you have wood duck decoys and these wood ducks are flying by and you make that sound, what is the problem? What is the intelligent problem? You're flying, they're flying. I mean, if you're making the flying sound, that means you're just passing in the night. (laughs) Well, that was a nice way to say it. But I I was thinking more like, you look like idiots. (laughs) Because you have wood ducks sitting on the water doing a sound that they only do when they're flying. flying. So so, how do you know they only do that when they're flying? Have you ever heard a wood duck do the flying sound while he was sitting? Nope. In all your years? No. Never. That's correct. In fact, they usually make that when they're spooked and leaving, like so I, as soon as they get taken off. Exactly. Yeah. So I would say they make, uh, how many sounds would you say they make on the water? On the water, a lot of different sounds. Uh, I don't, maybe kind of up to a hundred. Yeah, yeah, a lot. So they'll do different things. I took about four or five of them and they'll go. <laughs> it's just kind That's of. probably a, the most or, common one. And then you'll hear one go. And then if there's a bunch of them, you'll hear, and I'll roll my tongue. I heard them do it this morning when we were going out. I heard one doing that. Yeah. And so I make. Which that's all language. They're, they're to each other. I don't know what they're saying, but they're saying something. Well, the one and call that-, that gets them is I'll just scream it like. <laughs> and I don't know if that's like, please come help me. <laughs> It kind of has a come help me look, feel to it. You saw it, Phil. Those ducks, I was just screaming that. Wood ducks are moving. Here's my two guys from West Texas that that believe you cannot call wood ducks. Right. And they just right in the decoys. We pop, 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 pop. And I will admit they shot well, our two guests. Yeah. And we got 10 wood ducks. And so every time that happened, I just, it, I always think the same thing. They, people, they were believing a lie. That's right. It, it is possible. We've proven it. And now they've documented seen it. it. We've showed it 
on TV, and then I'm still meeting people after this discovery, which happened. When did you invent the wood duck call? It was early. I mean, early eighties. Early eight, so that's what five, almost years, 40, forty years, years ago. ago. Forty years ago, and look, people are still saying you can't call those wood ducks. <laughs> well, ten of them didn't get the memo, <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? Fifteen didn't get the memo on opening day two yeah. days ago. Yeah. Four didn't get the memo yesterday. It should have been about eight or ten. We didn't shoot as well yesterday. Yeah. So. Anyway, do the sound. The only one I hadn't heard you do is the little high thing they do. Oh, yeah. They'll do this. Yeah. But, and look, they do this. And I don't know what this one means either, but they'll do this when they're sitting. But here's what I noticed they'll answer each other. Yeah. And, and I don't do this when I'm calling them. I can do it because I've heard them do it. But what I just did seems to be the most effective yeah. for them to, I think that's saying, hey, there's a party going on. Right. You coming? Yeah. But they'll go, so you'll hear, in the, and you say, well, how did you figure this out? I just went out there and listened to them. That's what I've You'll hear one go, one will go. And then when he does that, you'll hear off in the woods, another one go. It's a kind hear, of a, it's an up one. and a down. Yeah. So somebody is saying, and then somebody answers him. I think they're saying, where are y'all at? <laughs> I'm over here. Where are you at? I'm over here. Or it could be. Becoming a duck in your inner self. That's right. He's thinking now like a duck. He's like. I've said one time in a video, I said, they're playing Marco Polo. Marco (laughs) Polo. Polo. Marco Polo. (laughs) But what's what's funny about it is there'll be a hundred of them, and they're all separately doing it. It's one at a time. And it, while all that's going on, you have all the clucks in them. <laughs> and then when one does that, that seems to be a more of a distress. Get over here now. I'm telling you now, 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 now. That could be 911. There's just, something's after me. You got to come They're save like, me. This is the safe zone. This is the safe zone. <laughs> we can only speak with the. <laughs> so it took me 37 minutes to get to where I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to- I don't know that we've ever had a detailed duck demonstration and discussion on this podcast. As I well, think you just I'm plowed just, new ground. I keep thinking about these two guys on the side of the road this morning, <laughs> and I'm like, whatever you're doing, this is not working. Having an altercation with somebody driving by and you're hollering at me. It's just not working. So before you make, read your scriptures, since we're already way behind anyway, I wanted to, Dad made a brilliant point from Titus about what it would look like to do the right thing, to be the right person, right? right. What Jace is talking about. Here's to make your point even stronger. You stopped it. See the view of the culture in America now. They're thinking this is a fairy tale. Well, that's and here's my point. So, so it's you, way beyond the fairy people tale. People would say is. just what Jay said. People said his friend said about what you can't call a wood duck. They would say you can't find a person like you're describing. That's right. It's impossible. And Paul makes that point as well, which shows you what faith does. Because right after that, in verse twelve of Titus one, he's talking about where Titus is. He's in the Isle of Crete. And here's what he says about Cretans. Here's what Paul said. Even one of their own prophets has said, Cretans are always liars, evil brutes, and lazy gluttons. And this testimony is true. So Paul is saying, you can find these men that you describe, the character, the qualities, all of that, in a place where even they say about themselves, you can't find men like that. So what changes? What changes these men to become these leaders, and I think it's real intelligence. They declare Jesus as Lord, and the Holy Spirit of God dwells yes. in human beings. That's what changes. And, so, then, and that's the difference in being in the truck and being the guy that won't cross the road. Let's take our last break. So in verse 16, let me get my glasses back on. <laughs> According to the word, took the glasses off twenty two well, minutes ago. Well, I was going to say the Lord Himself will come down. You, there's three things you're going to hear when you hear this. You need to say, "Oh, you can call wood ducks, and the Lord is here." Here's three things you're going to hear. 
He's got three calls that this is true. The Lord himself will come down from he- with a loud command. So you're going to hear a loud command. Yep. Then you're going to hear the voice of the archangel. By the way, we're in Thess- First Thessalonians 4, 13. Or it may be a loud command with the voice of the archangel. Yep. And with the trumpet call of God. So there's going to be some sort of trumpet sound. I'm sure we just. That everybody that, is going to hear. That's yeah. one loud trumpet. I'm telling you. Worldwide. And, and watch. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Mass resurrection. Now, here's what's unusual about this. The same people are mentioned twice because if you go back to verse 14, Jesus is bringing those who have fallen asleep in him. Well, he's the Christ. So he's bringing those in Christ back, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Well, how is that possible? He's bringing their spirits, and their body is being raised. Reconnection. Oh, you're talking about new creation. Yeah. Ooh. So just stew on that a while. And then verse 17, because we're getting back to this, where this young girl was having the rapture anxiety. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So that's what rapture means is to be caught up. Yep. Now, so that's the, even though the word doesn't appear, the meaning of the word appears in this text. That's, this this text. is where it comes from. Now look, you say, well, what happens next? Well, there's been movies. Yep. There's been books. Series, yep, TV series. Now, here's the only thing I'm going to say before we get deep into this when we get into the marriage and the resurrection, Lake 20. I will say this, according to First Thessalonians 4, don't miss this next part because this is all it says what happens next. And to me would justify that this is the most important. Mm -hmm. And so we will be with the Lord forever. That's all I'm worried about. Yeah, that's that's the lead. That is the lead. (laughs) You say, what's going to happen? I mean, what's it going to be like? We'll talk about it. We'll we'll give you what we think. Yeah, and there's a few hints. There's a few hints. We're going to look at the windows into what that's going to be like. But the... The point Paul was making is we're going to be with the Lord forever. Well, that's real intelligence. Yep. If you can be with the Lord, the creator of the universe who came to this planet. Forever. Forever. And that's why he says, therefore, encourage each other with these words. That's encouraging. Yeah. I mean, it really is. So the reason I was bringing this up, because then he, he keeps talking about it, because what do people do? Paul knows what they do. They're like... Well, when is that going to happen? Mm-hmm. Once again, thousands of books. And look, I've heard many predictions. I've heard, I got a buddy of mine that's already predicted to me three times when this was going to happen. And guess what? Wrong. Oh, for three. Because you said, well, how do you know he was wrong? Because the time already passed that he said. Yeah. And I said, look, quit worrying about the times and day. I quote this. Yeah. Quit worrying about that. Because we're not, we're not supposed to know. That's right. Because he says, now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write you. I'm sorry that you're obsessed with when this is going to happen, and you think that you have some special relationship where God would tell you and not everybody else. But Paul said, I'm not worried about it. For you know very well, the day of the Lord would come like a thief. So then it says, verse 4, but this day shouldn't surprise you, even though you don't know what it is. You brothers are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You're sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Now, then he makes an illustration about what I saw this morning when it was dark, which I think this is clever, it's humorous, and it makes you think. He said, verse 6 of chapter 5, So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. (laughs) See, I slept most of the night last night, but I got up early because you got to be there before daylight to get some ducks. But I saw some people who were obviously drunk, and guess why? It was nighttime, and they were 
walking not in a straight line. They didn't pass the sobriety test, and I, I didn't even have to get them, pull them over. I just watched them, could not walk in a straight line. And one of them was hollering obscenities at me as I passed by, and all I was doing was driving in my truck, going duck hunting. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled. So you say, what was their problem? I know one of those guys' problem was that we got some self-control problem. Mm -hmm. We need to put on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. So this is kind of his little Ephesians 6 version. Armor of God. Armor of God. God's given us everything we need for life and godliness. Where's that at? Uh, there's a verse that says that. For God, now here's here's what I really wanted to bring out because this young girl had 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 been to church and she deemed that she had rapture anxiety. And the only place I told her this. I said the only place that that's referenced, rapture's never rapture referenced, but the caught up is what that means. So I said it's first verse of four, but I, I went with this. God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that kind of sounds like, and so we'll be with the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, look, here it is again. We may live together with him. That's his point. Yep. He's doubled down on it now in, in what, seven verses? Yep. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as you're doing. So I had that opportunity three days ago. I was like, you need to get to know the Lord intimately. Yep. And the more you know him, the more you get to know him, you'll know that eternal life is real. That's right. And, and you, you'll be able to have a peace about that. But I'm positive I didn't get it. I didn't say what were you told. What were you? I'm positive that this young girl probably heard a very scary sermon about God's wrath and about the rapture and about all these symbolic language that scared a young kid half to death. And and she came up with a phrase that I thought was disturbing. You know, here she is trying to get her life right, right. But she's suffering from rapture anxiety. <laughs> Which I had never heard of that either. I I hadn't either, and I I know I've been on this for a couple of days. So when you're when you're thinking about the rapture, you don't want it to turn into a rupture, because then you're living in fear all the time. And the in the verse you mentioned from First John that you can know you have eternal life. That's why he says those of us who live by faith and understand this, whenever that day comes. I'm going to be fired up about it. Oh, my wife says it at least once a week. She's like, I'm so ready, you know, for the Lord to come. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about that. Me too. I, I love it when she says it. Yeah. Because she won't be surprised when it happens. Yeah. And, people... and you say, what do you think is going to happen? Look, we're going to give you all kind of ideas. But I, I know that. We're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. That's mentioned yep. several times. Uh, I know the transformation that happened when I gave my life to Christ spiritually. But I'm telling you, when you get a new body, whatever this body's going to be like, when, and it gives you some, some clues into it, imperishable, immortal, glorified. I'm assuming that that transformation, we're thinking way too small on about what we're going to be doing. Uh, I agree. And John that's didn't say. They, that's why they've got head down and tail up, wide open. A lot of people said, well, let's just build a artificial intelligence. And they said, well, we'll make somebody that's the perfect somebody. Right. So they, they said, that's the way we'll do it. Yeah. But you know what the and problem is, And they look just Bill? like humans. They got them, they got them trimmed oh, yeah. down, and, and they said— we, we've, we've done it. What Jesus has already done for us yeah. without their help, yeah. they're making these robots that walk around thinking, and they got the little black box narrowed down to a little thing up in their head, <laughs> and they know everything. So the point uh, is... Uh, they, they know that What they know is what, what the current people who have come up with them, yeah. what they've come up with, then they believe it. All right, so the point we, is Jesus is better than art, artificial. He's, he's better because he's real. So we're out of time. 
We'll talk about that in our overtime segment if you want to follow us over at blazetv.com slash unashamed.